Well, welcome people there in the old view of ours. Yes, I doff my cap to thee. Thank you for joining me today. So I've got some more news. Yes, Sean Murray was quite busy with a tweet the other day and uh, he's put out another one shortly after I'd done my freaking video on the other one. So if you'd missed the previous one, I'll put it up on the screen in a second. So one second, let me bring that up for you. I also put on a bit of music. There you go, some music, the old trusty Winamp that I've got going on down here. But this is the video that I've done, the, the actual... Well, this is the tweet that I've done the video on the other day. So No Man's Sky Switch is releasing on October the 7th. That's really soon. Mind-blowing stuff. Actually releases on the same day as the new Hulu version of um, Hellraiser. One of my favourite horror films of all time, people. Just as an extra side nugget of information there. What am I looking forward to most? Probably the Hellraiser at this stage, and I'll get to why in a moment, but Switch is our biggest release and marks the moment No Man's Sky ticks over to version 4.0. So Switch is our next big release and marks the moment No Man's Sky ticks over to version 4.0. Now we are quite used to seeing notable changes to the universe on big version updates like version 1, 1 1.5, 2, 2.5, 3, 3.5 and 4 would have kept to that pattern and tradition but we all know that Hello Games has sort of moved from that tradition of delivering big updates to delivering smaller updates throughout the year which they have done in swathes for the last two years so hats off to them they've done an awesome job of that but to hear that a version 4.0 is probably not going to affect the verse that we're in is very unusual, isn't it, really? Right, anyway, Switch is a real labour of love for us, and the whole team is fully focused on delivering that technical mini-miracle. But it's odd, because in previous years, I'm fairly sure that he said that a, a, a slight number of his team broke away and brought it over to Switch and say, Sean, you never guess what we blinking done. We've only just gone and made it work on Switch. I'm fairly sure that he said, like, maybe two or three of the team managed to do that on their own and um yeah but now it looks like he's saying that the whole team there's 30 odd plus employees there now so i find that very odd and also we already know that he split his team in half for half the team to go and work on this new project but you know i suppose it is what it is we can only go by what's written in black and white clear as crystal right there so we can only take his work for word for it that his whole team is focused on delivering it over to the switch Okay, brilliant. I would have thought that making it work on VR would have been my harder sort of job, really, technically speaking. But then again, I don't know what goes into the optimization of getting the game over to the Switch. But then if you look at something like, you know, Star, Star freaking Link, Starlink, Battle for Atlas, that came over to Switch. And that you can fly from planet to planet and seamlessly transition and things like that. So... You know, it's already been... I don't want to say it's already been done because that's not a procedurally generated universe, but, you know, it's not like the biggest technical miracle in the whole world when you look at Starlink Battle for Atlas, but it, it is what it is. Anyway, Sean Murray's put out a new tweet today, and it says, 2022 has already been one of the most busy years to date with Outlaws, the Steam Deck, Sentinels, Switch, Mac OS. Has that happened? I don't know, on the Mac, so I can't say whether it has or hasn't. Leviathan, Expeditions, and more. The focus of 4.0 is the Switch release. Okay, 4.0 is the Switch release, but it says the focus. So you can be multi-focused. <laughs> <laughs> Am I reading into this too much? So the sole focus is the Switch release, but could it be that there might be some things coming into the actual verse? And when I say some things coming into the actual verse, I'm thinking, well, they've optimized the shite out of the Switch version. And for Nintendo to say, right, this belongs on our platform, it should be bug-free. And let's face it, there's not many Nintendo games out there where you can glitch or duplicate stuff into iteration. Are they going to do some tweaks to sort of make it more gamified on the actual Twitch, Switch, you know? Yeah. And also, because there's no sort of multiplayer, this bit here where it says, to introduce a new group of players into our welcoming community. 
Well, we'll welcome them with open arms and say, yes, welcome to the No Man's Sky community, people. And they can communicate on Reddit and things like that. But right now, there's no crossplay. There's no multiplayer for these Nintendo players to be seen inside of the verse. So can we share their bases? Can Hello Games each of e feature their bases? I doubt it, because I don't think we're going to be able to go see them, are we, if they're on the freaking Switch? I don't know. I don't know how this all works. I'm eager, eager to see the patch notes for those people, because I'm wondering whether there's a little bit more going on behind the scenes. You know, aren't they polishing up all the bugs inside of current iteration? I mean, you can still go to a settlement and chat to one of the vendors from behind and it freezes up your whole game. Have they fixed that, for example? Are we going to get new things inside of the Quicksilver store? We've got these posters to get through. And after the posters, we've got some grass. After the grass, there's nothing else there. So I'd imagine we'll probably get some new things into the Quicksilver store. Now, something else to touch on as well that I think might come into the verse is right here. Sean Murray says, Expeditions have been super popular. We know there's a ton of people playing right now. And Expeditions are where a lot of the community spend their time. We never release expeditions instead of updates, but rather as well as planned updates. Well, 4.0, by the sounds of things, had a lot of freaking planning. You know, his whole freaking team's working on it, apparently so. So, you know, it's a planned update. So, reading between the lines, I would like to hope that with this planned update comes an expedition. You know, at best, we might get an expedition if that's if that's to be read into as being truth. But I mean, it was back in May 25, so who knows? Well, 2020, whatever, 2022, May 25th, I should say. So yeah, you know, it might come about. We might get an expedition there, but will it drop on the same day as the Switch update? I very much doubt it. I mean, the Switch update drops on a Friday anyway, which is a little bit weird when it comes to Hello Games patterns and schedules, as we all know. So, I think maybe if there is an expedition, we're going to see it inside of the patch notes to say Expedition XYZ is going to be starting on this date, and this is what it's going to be. So, there might be a new expedition. As we know, Expeditions is going into the actual Switch update. So, what are they going to do? Say, so, okay, well, you, know, you can rerun this one and get yourself a Golden Vector. I don't think so. I think they're probably dropping a new expedition, is my thoughts and feelings on it. And I would like to think, okay, hear me out on this one. This is where the speculation comes in now, peeps. You know what? I'll make myself big for this. We'll turn off the music. We're going to get serious. Okay, so every freaking year since No Man's Sky launched, pretty much, we have had updates delivered in Halloween that have been slightly more dark, slightly more sinister, and brought that air of onimus into the, um, the verse, you know, with what? The abyss and desolation. So... Who's to say we might not get an update towards the end of October that might deliver in some super creepy? Some super creepy! Now, when you look at, say, like the station override, and we try to use it now inside of a pirate system, and it comes up glass, 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 it does make me think, well, they're still thinking, they're still hitting this freaking realm of glass drum, aren't they? I would love to see something get delivered in this October that makes a realization of this realm of glass or the void or whatever into verse. But this is, I'm sounding like an unbroken, I'm sounding like a broken freaking record now, people. I've been, I've been chiming off on this freaking void and realm of glass since it started appearing with the abandoned buildings and and we've got the nested planets, and we've got the little creepy shites appearing around the abandoned buildings and out of the eggs. And then we've got the, the freaking derelict freighters. Every single time, it's like when we've got the derelict freighters, I'm like, oh, it's going to be in the realm of glass. No, it's Captain Steve, it's not, it's not, it's not the realm of glass. <laughs> no. Uh, and then Ariadne went missing. She went to board a dark freighter in between the realms. And yeah, so. And now Ariadne's code's appearing on these sentinel freaking pillars, isn't it? Like she's still out there somewhere, people trapped in between worlds. You know, the same place frickin' Artemis went. You know, this is how long they've been teasing it. Since Artemis, he even says that he went missing as he went through a portal, and now he's been, he was being chased and observed by the 12 or the 13 or something. Yeah, it's pretty darn frickin' weird. Uh, and then there's all the lore from the abandoned buildings. I was really hoping version 4.0 was going to tie up all these sorts of fragments of lore and polish off and finish off all these things that I've just forementioned. 
but sadly not, people. It does look like it's going to be the Switch focus, and it's just bringing Switch into verse. And I would like to welcome every single Nintendo Switch player that hasn't played No Man's Sky into the verse. You're in for a freaking treat. However, if you are a Switch player, and um, you've already got yourself another console or a PC, and you've already played No Man's Sky, is there anything new here for you? Again, this is something that brings me back to the Switch version. You know, and as she says, Switch version... It makes sense since it's a solo experience. For all those that might have a Switch on the go as well as having a PC and another console, a lot of people do when it comes to gaming, unless you're a kid and the Switch is all you've got or something, but uh, I'm wondering whether they might add something new for the lore for Switch players, just to pan it out a bit. I mean, anybody that's had their eye or the finger on the pulse when it comes to No Man's Sky knows what happens when you get to the center of the universe. They know what's there to be delivered into verse. They know what the lore has to offer. So why not give them something new? I mean, technically it's a rehash of a game that's already there. Whenever people do a remaster or a rehash or, or something or bring it to a new console, they usually expand on something that's there to make it worth saying, yes, I'm going to pay full price for that, even though I own it on my PC or I own it on a console. You know, it's worth paying full price for. It's full price on Switch. And I think if Hello Games hasn't expanded on something inside of that universe for Switch players... They're limiting who they're selling it to. And not only that, they're putting out a boxed version for PlayStation 5 on the very same day, but you can buy it digitally for the PlayStation 5. So why would you buy it digitally and then go out and buy a hard copy? I don't get it. I don't get it, unless they're going to be putting something else in there. So I'm saying, wait until we, till we see the patch notes. I don't want to hype people up, because I think what Sean Murray has said stands. You know, it's black and white, clear as crystal. 4.0 is the Switch focus. We're bringing it to Switch. I don't think we're going to be seeing the likes of when they brought it to Xbox and Next or Beyond or whatever. That's my feelings on this. That's my takeaway from this. And I kind of hope that I'm wrong. I'm hoping that Hello Games is going to surprise us. But to be honest, I'm going with what Sean Murray is saying in black and white. And if they do throw us a, a curveball and they throw in a shed load of surprises, then it's a freaking bonus. OK, um, so normally I would speculate and go off on all sorts of weird tangents. I kind of have with this, but I've tried to keep keep it inside the realms of you know what's possible I, I think an expedition could be possible will it happen at the very same time the switch drops no i think they'll probably give the switch players a good week to get bedded in get all their stuff get up to a certain level and then they might slip in the expedition and then now the expedition might last for about three weeks and take us to the end of october where they might throw out another sort of content update that might sort of enhance some of the horror type aspects of no man's sky but is it going to be big no it's probably going to be more cosmetic -y type stuff like how they delivered in the the um you know the tainted metal and the bits and bobs with the scrap vendor maybe they might pad that out a bit maybe they might do a little bit more with the derelict frame freighters or something you know those those rooms that you end off in in those derelict freighters a double room height for a reason I, i'm still waiting for them to slip the odd boss in there or something it might not ever happen but you know i'm trying to keep things in check and not get people too excited but no man's sky's got so much freaking possibility and potential hasn't it you know it's very difficult to keep yourself grounded especially when you've got a team like hello games working on it because they've already delivered in crazy freaking stuff that we didn't even freaking ask for or be predict and then some and all the stuff that we sort of predicted or speculated on which brings me on to my next point about speculation. Is speculation good for No Man's Sky? Is it good for the people? Is it good for hype? Sometimes, yes, it might lift the hype too high and people feel disappointed, perhaps in this occasion. I mean, I know that I'm feeling slightly disappointed to hear that version 4.0, a marked update, is moving away from their traditional pattern. But is that the fault of the community for speculating? No, we're along a ride that we've seen patterns in. Yes, it's like thinking, oh, I'm on a roller coaster. we're going up, we're going up, we're going to be coming down, and there's going to be a freaking loop, because that's what happens on roller coasters, and then it just, you know, just curves off. <laughs> That's not a great roller coaster. <laughs> you know what I mean? But yeah, it happens. It happens and it's happening right now. Anyway, 
Is speculation good? I feel that it is because a lot of people speculate. They put their ideas out. They put their wishes into video. And usually they put quite a lot of you know effort into delivering that in. And they give sense and rhyme or reason behind it. Nobody that's putting out speculation inside of you know my sort of circles that I'm moving in and all the people that I watch, they're going on grounded things or going from where the law is pointing and saying, yeah, that's possible. This is possible. That could happen. And um, yeah, I feel that Hello Games, they've already said that they listen to the community. If they're watching these videos, they might go, you know what, that's a good idea, but we could tweak it. If we do this and we do that, that could really work. And maybe that's helping fuel their idea base and thinking, well, yeah, they want cities. Well, we can't deliver a city. We can't deliver us. Well, we can do settlements, you know, things like that. So it's probably it's like right now they're probably looking at all the ship customization, seeing Starfield, and thinking, well, you know, maybe we do need to compete with the likes of Starfield. Maybe we do need to add in a little bit of ship customization. But if we can't do it on the actual starships, maybe we could do it with the freighters, and maybe that's what spawned on endurance. I mean, we've got freaking crews. Guess what else has got crews? Starfield, you know. So yeah, they saw people watching Starfield and going, oh, I like the crew idea. Well, maybe that's why we got crews come to our freighters. Maybe that's why we got new rooms for our freighters. Maybe they knew this was coming into Starfield. Maybe they knew from people's videos that we wanted an overhaul to the interiors of the freighters. They hadn't been touched for a while. You know, so who knows? I think speculation doesn't do any damage as long as you don't set speculation as expectation, because that's where it falls down. Speculation is like ideas based and grounded on the direction that the game's going in. Just keep that in mind when you're watching speculation videos, and hopefully you're not going to get that feeling of disappointment, that they're just ideas, but based on where they can see Hello Games could move, based on the lore and based on things that people are seeing inside of the verse. Anyway, that's how I do my speculation. So there we go, people. I'm going to be signing off right now. I, I'm not going to lie. I am a little bit deflated, but I am still quite eager and excited to see the patch notes drop when it comes down to the Switch update, because I'm wondering whether they might slip in the odd expedition, and I'm wondering whether we might see something pretty gnarly around Halloween time. At least that's my hopes. That's what I'm holding on to right now, people. Otherwise, it's going to be quite difficult making content at the moment for content creators, or, or at least myself. You know, I'm not like the biggest, bestest base builder in the world or anything like that. I might have to look to try and make my own fun, make some events in game, or even start my new sort of adventure, you know, voice voice act for um, EXO, which I'm planning to do anyway, because I think Switch players are going to really enjoy that sort of stuff. And also, it was on my old channel, and I've been meaning to do it, and I've been waiting for a big, beefy update to say, right, now I can jump in and do it. We didn't get the big, beefy update, Update, but we have had a big beefy influx of new people coming in so you know what that's a new audience that hasn't seen my previous content and for all those that miss my old content it's a good time to deliver that adventure so i'm going to be hitting that back up as a new save it's going to be on normal mode and it's going to be me voice acting from captain steve stuck in the game with exo voice acted building bases pretending that i don't pretending that i've been reset basically and i don't know the no man's sky universe and yeah me bumbling about basically so it's that, that, that's that's something to look forward to. So anyway, people, I'm, I'm, I'm jibber-jabbering on, and uh, I've just took up like 18 minutes of your time based on one freaking tweet. So you know what? I'm going to give you back some of your weekend. So take care. Goodbye, goodbye, and goodbye again.